Hi, this is Steve Bragg, and all the videos you're about to see come from a trip to Palau and Yap in April of 2013. All the videos are taken with a GoPro camera by my wife, Melissa. Now we're starting off leaving our Tropic Dancer boat in Palau, and we're showing us going on a little skiff through the various islands in the Palau area. And then we're jumping in from the skiff. The skiff holds about 18 people. Our dive trip had 16 divers. And you're seeing everyone jumping in and Melissa getting out of the way as fast as she can. Uh, next one in is me. Anybody who has a camera turns around and grabs a camera from somebody on the boat. And then they come down. And out of this group, we had several people with pretty large rigs. Though I'm noticing an awful lot of people are now using GoPro video cameras instead, which are much, much smaller. Now then we move along to some cave diving. This is technically not a cave we're going into. This is just a hole that goes straight down through the reef and it, it uh, bottoms out at about 100 feet down. And also you seem to be looking at a dead chicken there in the picture. That's actually a plastic one which is awarded to anybody on the dive boat who forgot something like a mask or their fins or whatever. That happens to be Lori going down who is a newly certified diver and she gets the Royal Order of the Chicken for that dive. Here we are looking back up from well down below. This is actually a different dive, and you can see there's several different holes going down through the reef with light coming down. And then typically there's going to be a side hole you can go out and come out on a wall on the side of the reef, which is the case here. This one's at about 110 feet down. Now we're going to switch over to chandelier caves, sometimes known as chandelier caverns. And this is a set of four caves that are uh, pretty close to the main uh, capital area of Palau. And you start off in a little bit of light and then it gets progressively darker. And this video is pretty far back in the cave system, so it's pitch dark. And as you can see, the lighting's actually pretty good. Melissa was able to get a decent image going up towards an air pocket in the cave just using other people's dive lights. And uh, new air seeps into this pretty regularly so you can get up here and take out your regulator and chat with everybody else and then move on to the next cave and eventually turn around and go all the way back out again. Interesting, fairly short dive, not as dangerous as it looks. So staying on the theme of going under uh, some overhead environments. We're now switching over to the Yap Caverns area, which is in the southern tip of the island of Yap, which is in, uh, northeast of Palau. Uh, that's me right there going through, and there's a whole series of these interconnecting uh, little tubes, sort of, that you can go through. And then coming out the other side of it, there's a little batch of coral, which is pretty unique. You'll see in a moment here, it changes color when you touch it. So here I am whacking it with the strobe on my uh, camera, and it turns from brown color over to white. And as far as we can tell, it stays that way for a few seconds, and then it fades back to the original color. Now right around the corner from there was a cuttlefish. Uh, rough guess, this thing's about a foot long. It's so ugly, it's cute, and so it attracts a lot of photographers. Now, I was staying on the theme of somewhat larger animals. We're going to switch over to some barracudas, and these were over in Yap. I have seen larger ones in, pardon me, in Palau. This is uh, one of the smaller clusters. We've actually seen some pretty large ones, several hundred spiraling up on a previous trip in Palau. And also, there's a, about a two foot long fish called the Napoleon wrasse in these shots. And this one is a very tame Napoleon wrasse. Uh, one of the dive masters has been feeding it for the last 12 years. And so it keeps circling back around, apparently looking for snacks, and which we were not giving him. Apparently likes eggs, by the way. And after this video, we come up with the dive master in question, Captain Ike of our boat, who's hugging the Napoleon wrasse. and also keeps his hand over the mouth of the Napoleon Rass, maybe to keep from getting bitten, I'm not really sure. And there we are with that one. And this guy comes incredibly close. 
GoPro cameras are very wide angle, so this Napoleon Rass is just a couple of inches away from the camera. Now, switching to a different dive, this is how you look for manta rays on the island of Yap. You go through the island, there's a channel that cuts through there, and then you sit in the coral in about 15 feet of water and wait for the mantas to come to you. And sometimes you can sit there for quite a long time and nothing happens. Our first dive, we saw nothing. And this is the second dive after, oh, about a 45 minute wait. And these, let's see, this manta here is maybe eight feet wide or so. And they circle around. This is a little uh, area where they come so the fish can basically clean them up. It's called a cleaning station. And he's circling around, maybe a little curious about the divers. And then he's going to make one more turn right here and head straight for Melissa and go right over her head, maybe just two feet or so over her head. These are extremely cool. Uh, we opted not to go for one more of these dives the next morning, and of course, seven of them showed up for that one. Now, you can also see mantas in Palau, in quite large ones, in fact. So this is the dive over in Palau, and pretty close to the surface. This is maybe 15 feet down or so. I would guess this uh, manta is maybe 10 feet wide and came right by. That was me, the photographer, in front there, and it went right over Melissa's head and then zipped off into the distance. This is in the German Channel area, also known for very high currents. Uh, right after this guy disappeared, the current flipped around and grabbed us and sent us spinning off in a different direction, pretty high speed. And speaking of high speeds, this is the German Channel here, but sitting on the bottom at about 65 feet. And sometimes you see sharks and mantas, and sometimes you just see these amazing schools of fish, which can really zip around. So, for example, watch this. Also, notice me twitching as all these fish come tearing through. You never quite know when that's going to happen. Uh, Melissa suspects there might have been an underwater uh, earthquake right there, which triggered it. Don't really know. We have been involved in an earthquake before off the coast of Belize, and it's like a little rumbling sound. Anyways, then we go to Jellyfish Lake, which is an island in Palau. And in this one, there's something on the order of 5 million jellyfish. And so you paddle out there without your scuba gear. This is all snorkels. And this is looking straight down. Just This is a typical spot. This isn't the deepest concentration by any means. And you can also snorkel down into them to take pictures. So here I am struggling to stay deep, which wasn't working too well. That's maybe 10 feet down and trying to get a good shot, and then coming right back up. And all I was thinking about at the time was don't inhale because you might get a jellyfish in your mouth, which would be bad. Now, this is a little mandarin fish. They're maybe two or three inches long, and they tend to lurk in certain types of coral. They have kind of an odd motion to them. It's very jerky. And if you just kind of sit there and wait, they get curious and they come out to take a look at you. And Melissa was sitting here for about 20 minutes and got a good stretch of video of this little guy. And as you can see, they're pretty jerky, uh, probably on caffeine all the time based on the way they move. Also, one of the big pieces and big attractions of Palau is wall diving. And you have clouds of fish that appear on these things. And sometimes you'll see big stuff cruising along the wall, and sometimes you won't, but almost invariably you'll see thousands and thousands of different types of fish that tend to move in schools. So you might have one school of one type of fish and then another school of a different type moving along uh, separate from it. It's pretty spectacular. And also throughout this area, there are so many sea turtles, it's ridiculous. We have uh, over a dozen videos of sea turtles. Unfortunately, most of them involve butt shots because they almost always are trying to get away from you. And so the photo is of their butts. So this guy, of course, is trying to get away from Melissa. Uh, they're not especially fast. They're pretty well armor plated, so they're not really overly concerned about photographers. But as soon as they see you, they're probably heading away except for a case where they're completely surrounded by photographers and Melissa happens to be in the right place. So this guy is coming straight towards her after it successfully escaped everybody else, and she ended up with a nice shot there. And, of course, after it diverted around her, I was lurking right around the corner for yet another shot of the poor little guy. 
Now, one of the things you'll see all over the Western Pacific are anemones, which in this case, it happens to be a gorgeous orange one. And inside of it, there'll be an anemone fish, it usually has two white vertical stripes on it. The famous ones are clownfish, which you very rarely see. Usually it's gonna be these anemone fish or the pink anemone fish, which has one vertical white stripe. That's what you're seeing now in these yellow anemones. These guys are immune to the anemone, which has a, a poison in it. And I don't suggest you stick your hand in there either. And so they can live in there as a defensive measure. And when an anemone finally traps a fish, it rolls up into a ball. And here you see an, a purple ball with the immune anemone fish sitting around on top having a good time while it's munching on whatever it caught somewhere inside. And after it's finished absorbing that fish, it'll open up again and look like a normal anemone. And, inc and incidentally, these guys look incredibly cute as they're uh, zipping around inside all those anemones. We have one more example of an anemone fish, and this one is in a pretty high current, so you can see everything rolling around, including the camera. Uh, Melissa had a hard time holding still to take the shot. Now, one way you can hold still is to put on some gloves, like the person in the background there, and grab the coral, which is not really recommended since it damages the coral. But when you see a good, steady photograph underwater, chances are the photographer was, in fact, hanging on to something in order to take that shot. But in this case, uh, Melissa's being jerked around just as much as the anemone is. And then we have just regular old fish. Uh, certain types of fish pair up, and so they'll stay together as a pair like this. As you see, these are uh, masked banner fish, and they tend to be uh, a little skittish. This is a good shot because they didn't move away. Uh, Melissa had many attempts at this type of fish, and every now and then you'll find some that just sit there and are actually willing to model for you, but usually all you see is their hind end as they take off. For example, here's another couple of fish who, uh, as soon as they saw her coming, took off and ends up having a pretty short video of this one. But certain types of fish do go in pairs, and you'll see a lot of these on the ocean floor. And occasionally, you'll see the Moorish Idol, which is a really cool looking fish, but you very rarely see five of them at once. And in this case, there's a, maybe the school let out, who knows? But at any rate, we had a whole bunch of them, and so she followed along for a few moments. Now, there are some larger critters out there. This is a humphead wrasse, actually three of them. They're kind of slow and ponderous, so the video is speeded up a bit to make it look a little less boring, but there they were trucking along. And also, the area around Palau is famous for giant clams. This one happens to be dead, of course, completely cleaned out. That's uh, probably about two, two and a half feet wide right there. And also, there are wrecks from World War II in the area, and we went down on a couple of them. This particular one uh, also still has a lot of ordnance in it. What you're looking at is not a bunch of 55-gallon drums, but actually those are depth charges still activated, and Palau is looking for funding to get them removed. And that's it. So after we're done with our photography, we have to do our safety stop at 15 feet, and when that's done, we do a little spin to make sure no boat traffic is coming. Then you raise your hand up over your head to keep from clonking it on anything, and then up you go. And hopefully, the skiff from our boat is fairly close. And in this case, there it is, about 50 yards away, and they motor over and pick us up and take us back to the boat. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed your viewing of Palau and Yap Diving.